Hi guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. So uh, the trek is a distant memory now. Well it was yesterday, I'm just filming these bits today but uh, I put a video up on that so if anyone wants to show proof we were on the top or see proof I did put a short video up uh, uh, probably uh, the day before you see in this video. So that said um, we've been getting on with a few bits and pieces for the mini lathe, um, the pulleys for the motor, um, for the, I should say, the stepper motor that drives the lead screw, and a few brackets and bits and pieces for that. So, uh, yeah, we'll get on and show you the footage of that. So, uh, a little boring bar, um, another one of the little t cam type pulleys. And this is going to go on the end of the lead screw and I'm going to drive the lead screw with a stepper motor and this should be finishing cut just to go through there at 12mm. I've fitted the pulley up, it was a nice sliding fit on the end of the shaft. Um, yeah, so it's it's basically it's on there. I've just put a little drill bolt and washer on the end temporarily. I am going to have to drill uh, a grub screw hole in the flange here and the shoulder uh, down into the keyway. And I'll also put the bolt in the end and I'll make a nice little probably aluminium spacer or something to go on the end of there. Just for that bolt to um, clamp it all up solidly. So yeah, that's that side done. Um, here's a little stepper motor. Here's the pulley that's going on the motor to drive it. Um, there's no hole in this one, just a centre drilled hole both ends. I didn't know what size shaft was going to be on the motor. So um, yeah, measure up that shaft, drill and ream a hole in there. Hopefully I got the right reamer. If not, um, we're going to have some fun with that little hole trying to bore it out. So the hole was a quarter diameter. So I'm just going to drill it out, it's a five and a half. I'll slow it down a bit. Let that do its uh, magic. Get a bit clogged up there. As you can see, I fitted the motor up on its bracket with a belt, um, so I lined it up. I buy high uh, this one, this motor, and it all sits here nicely. Um, I didn't mention it a moment ago, but yeah, I haven't put a, a tensioner on here yet, but that's going to be straightforward enough. So I've got a few options. Uh, operator side being round here, I could stick this motor down here somewhere. I could stick it that way around, down here somewhere, which would work, actually. Am I thinking too much about this? Uh, well, that would work there. And that would be fairly simple to make a bracket to make it slide up and down. Um, yeah, well that's two options. Uh, third option would be to mount it here somewhere. Um, yeah, that's another option. And if I want to make it really difficult for myself, I could fit that in there. Let's just get that somewhere in here. And it will fit in there like that. Well, that's certainly the neatest, most compact option. Um, hmm. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, make life difficult for yourself, eh? I can square the motor up. I haven't got... It's going to be difficult to... Adjust. There's, there's very little room for error there. That way, there's more. I think. See, the trouble is, if I put it down the front here, we've got the issue with the wiring. But when I do all the guards and the control panel on the front, it's all closer to home. I think my method's going to be to mount it down there, you know. Uh, so, 
Next job, part this off. I'll do it. Part. There it is. The chuck's a bit grubby. Okay. Oh. Face that. And a little chamfer, and we're done. <coughs> well, we can have quite a big chamfer on top of here, make it look nice. I'll do it. Uh, Let's get in there and break that edge. And I think that's the part made. So a little retaining washer fallen down in the bed again. <laughs> yeah, a little retaining washer. So we'll have a six mil bolt go through there. That sits neatly in there. And that's now proper retaining washer for that. So send the job first. Oop. And my drill bit has dropped in my T slot. Oop. This drill bit. Oh. <laughs> Up a bit more ahead. Okay. Tapping drill for M5. Okay. And then M5 tap. Right, let's slow it all down a bit. Uh, one that. <laughs> Finger on the stop button. And stop into reverse. Feeling brave today. Okay. So that's that hole tapped. Looking good. Drop the tap down the T-slot again. <laughs> okay. Uh, got a little burr in there. I'll just have to, I'll just run a needle file through there to get rid of the burr, and we'll fit a grub screw and fit that on the shaft. Feeling lazy today, can't be doing with axle. <laughs> so just basically using an 8mm cutter to chop the end off this bit of plate. It's this bit I'm gonna want. So I'll machine that side, I've squared it up on the table, got it clamped down direct on the bed. I've been very careful that I'm in the slot with the cutter before I even started, just to uh, not have a, 
a milled slot in my table, which we don't want. So yeah, just gonna let that do its thing. Um, two mil cut. Um, it's ten mil plate, I think. So five passes. Happy days. So just chucking a bit of WD in there, and I'll let it do its thing. So that's just finished cutting, and while that's been doing what it's doing, I've cut a bit of that channel that we used, um, 100 mil long. I need to cut one leg off it. So, yeah, very simple. Let me just turn that bead off, turn the cutter off, unlock the head. Let's just send her up. Uh, where are we? Okay. And table back across. Oh, I'm going to have to undo my stop now. Okay. Unlock my Y. And I'm all set up, ready to set this chopping off while I set up the other plate. So, uh, yeah, let's just uh, get some readings on there and we'll start a cut. So I'll let run, that run back and forth across there. Um, three passes probably, chop that bit off and then we'll dress it back to the, uh, the rear base. So I'll just mill it off so that it's nice and flat. Um, yeah, and in the meantime, I'll get the vacuum out, clean this lot up and set it up to cut the other side. So with the piece in the vise cut off, I simply moved across, back down onto the table where I was already set up, and we're going to chop this plate off here. Um, yeah, I did hacksaw the channel to length, because um, it wasn't too much, but uh, not in the mood for hacksaw in today really. So I'm just cutting this off with an 8mm cutter, and it still leaves me the off cut, the narrow piece at the back here, um, yeah, which is useful material. So yeah, um, and these obviously are going to be parts of the mounting bracket for the stepper motor that drives the lead screw. It's really nice to be able to set it up, um, set the feed into motion and just walk away. Um, I haven't set the stop at the chuck end but I am listening uh, and I've been deburring and uh, cleaning up the angled piece that was in the bikes before and it just lets me get on with something else while it's cutting the material. Um, there's no need to force the pace, you know, take maximum cuts, maximum depths. I just leave it do its own thing and then come back to it when I hear it stop cutting, send it the other way, put another cut on and carry on doing whatever else I want to do. So I just put the fly cutter up and I'm going to flash over this just to square it up only squared on the table with a, a square. It was close. Sizes aren't important here. It was real size. I just want I just picked up the center of everything. Um, so I want four holes, 47 mil centers. We shall have a look and we shall put four countersunk holes for M5 cap heads in here. Um, so 5mm, whatever it needs through, countersink, deburr, you've seen it all before guys, it's just drilling holes. Um, yeah, it's clamping the vice. Now I thought I was going to have to support this back edge and clamp it down, but you know, in the fact that it'll be howling and vibrating, but it's actually not. So happy days. Uh, so I cut the slot through here, I've basically got to cut this corner piece off. So I'm just put a slot that way and then it'll do a slot this way, drop this bit off, tidy it all up and then uh, finish it to size. So, so I've just clamped the fixed bracket and the sliding part of the bracket together in the mill here with the toolmaker's clamp. Centre drill two holes 50 mil apart roughly where I want them and I'm just going to drill half a drill for M6, no I don't want brake cleaner, I want WD-40. <laughs> M6 tapping drill right through the pair. 
little bit of deflection out here, I'll just take it gently. So, the little angle plate is bolted onto the bed with three screws onto the uh, box section in the right place. Um, the bracket we made earlier with the motor on it is on a slide on there with two bolts on the outside so I can slide it back and forth to loosen the tension of the belt. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's the stepper motor in place, ready to drive the lead screw and it will adjust back and forth. I can loosen these two bolts, slide it back, take the belt off should I need to, um, and then just slide it forward, hold it in some tension, tighten up the two bolts with washers and uh, yeah that's it so a um, little bit of alignment to do but this is all coming apart again anyway so uh, yeah that's the second of the two motors fitted so um, few little jobs left to do yet um, I want to put a reinforcement bar on the back of the bed um, where it's a big gap under the back in the back face that's been mentioned to me and that is a good idea I shall be doing that um, I'll be blocking off the ends of the box section and welding plates into there with an access hole one end for filling it um, I need to fit my DRO scales on the back and uh, then a bit more work on the carriage when I come to fit up the carriage I've got it very near but I need to fit up the carriage uh, once the carriage is fitted up on the cross slide I need to do a bit of uh, fitting on that when I've got to finish the um, riser block for the tool post in fact I do need to buy the tool post I think I mentioned that earlier so I'll buy the tool post probably do the riser block and carriage area next then strip it all down uh, fit the block in the back of here um, I may spin this round and show you what I'm talking about so yeah this area here from the base to the underside of the headstock headstock even though I've got four bolts in here now it's unsupported here so what I may do is machine the bottom face in here somewhere and the underside of the headstock or the bed here where the headstock sits maybe you know 50 mil wide by an inch you know two inch by one inch flat area top and bottom then fit a block in there um, take the head off put two bolts down through the bed to hold the block in place on the top and two bolts up from underneath uh, underneath the bed to clamp so I've got a block in here which is sort of boxing in this area where it's just sat um, on this one face there is a support fillet in here but um, yeah just to steady and tighten and tension the head up onto the bed make a block you know machine it first drill the holes uh, machine a block up and then uh, sort of uh, scratch it and scrape it and machine it so that it just fits in the gap and then tighten it down into place and uh, lock it off forever so yeah that's a, another little job I need to do um, in the bed here there are a couple of holes in the bed let me just spin across a bit yeah you can see the bed way there there's a hole back here and a hole back there and this is a machined face although it's painted I will be taking all this paint off to fit my DRO scale on the back here um, that's a job I need to do going forward maybe some sort of guard over the top we'll see we'll see haven't got there yet but uh, yeah so all this has got to be stripped down again everything off in uh, in preparation for um, you know for getting the bed all cleaned up uh, final operations on the bed before I can paint it and uh, start final assembly when it's all done I do need to rig up some sort of tensioner I mean I can oh, I can't move the whole thing I can let's just see you can't see it but the weight of the motor I don't think is going to be enough tension under load so I may off that bolt uh, put a little jacking screw in here off that plate that I put in um, just to sort of keep the motor under tension put a bit of tension on the motor I think purely a, a tapped hole through the through the upright I'm, I'm making this up as I go along here when I put this upright in if it has a tapped hole in it I can put a bolt in it um, some sort of shoe mounted off the motor unscrew the bolt to tension the motor and then just tighten the nut up so yeah I just designed that while we were thinking about it okay um, yeah that's what we're gonna do so I've had a busy few weekends lately and I've got a busy few weekends coming up as well so uh, the videos have thinned out a bit I'm afraid guys but uh, yeah that's that's all I've got for this one um, not a great deal of content but the mini lathe is coming on and I am doing bits and pieces I suppose I should go ahead and order the uh, quick change tool post really um, I'll probably when I go up from shooting this video I'll go up and uh, get that on order I think I'm going to get one from uh, 
I think it's Arc Euro Trade. I think I'm going to get one from there. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. And we will see you all very soon. Cheers now.